former singer of NSYNC, Chris Kirkpatrick here with another crazy card trick tutorial. You guys are going to learn a crazy card trick, but you should uh, subscribe first. I, I want to get that YouTube play button. And unfortunately, in order to do that, you need to have at least uh, 100,000 sub subscribers. So make sure to do that if you haven't done so already. But today we're going to do a, a hot card trick um, using these cards. Am I shilling them enough? The Copac 310s? You should get a deck. I, I got a deck. I, I didn't pay for it, but you should pay for it because it's a great deck. Um, so today we're going to be doing this crazy card trick that many of you guys may have seen done in uh, parts of the, the hood uh, that your parents told you not to go to. So we're going to mix up the deck in whatever way you deem appropriate for the situation. And we're going to have the spectator touch any card that they want with just their, their little uh, the tip of their finger. If that gets into focus, they can touch any card they want. So let's say they touch this card over here. We look at the uh, the card in this case. It has it ha it's the Ace of Diamonds. It's the Ace of Diamonds. I don't know this because uh, I'm looked away. But this card is subsequently lost in the middle of the deck and cut so that somewhere in the deck is that card. But here we're actually going to employ the use of a couple cards here to help me find your card, sir. You're you're not going to believe this, but if I give the deck just a one of these fancy cuts you might have seen on Instagram, we actually could get four cards to the top of the deck that you did not expect would be there. That's right, the, f uh, the four aces. They're actually going to help me find your cards, sir. Uh, so we have the diamonds, we have the spade, we have the club, and lastly, we have the hearts. And they're going to help me find your cards, sir. Uh, so you hold on to the deck, the spectator's holding on to the deck, and I'm going to hold on to the aces because what's going to happen is that your card is going to jump right between the aces, sir. So for the first time right now, uh, what is your card? And of course, the spectator is going to say the Ace of Diamonds. And you go, um, well, in that case, we'll, let's try it this way. Let's do the reverse right there. So you see, now we have just three cards. What? We have a heart, we have a spade, and we have a, a club, but we don't have the, where did the diamond go? Oh boy. The spectator looks inside of the deck that they've been holding the entire time and they spread through and guess what? Inside of the deck is one card face up, their selected card, the ace of the out of focus, the ace of, the ace of diamonds. There you go. The ace of diamonds. boy you want to know how that trick's done don't you i know you uh well i'll show you how it's done it's a little bit complicated tbh so this is more advanced next level magic that you're going to need to put a little bit of time in like most things in life but this one is well worth the, the investment and time that you'll put into it uh do i did i did i i said sub right i already said sub 100k uh get, hashtag get piggy to 100k we could do this um, so here, the first thing you got to do is put the aces on top of the deck. This is the setup that you do before anything. You put the aces on top of the deck and, and you're good to go. So at this point, you could shuffle the deck as long as you keep the aces on top. And guess what? Everything is going to be good because uh, they're still there, right? They're still there. You're going to need to force one of these aces in whatever way you want. I like doing the spread call force where I just call this, this ace right here as I have the spectator touch any card they want. Of course, because this ace happens to be writing along the spread, they could touch any card they want, and it doesn't matter because when I square up the deck, it's going to force the ace of spades. You don't, you, you don't have to do that. You could do this, this thing, right? You could do the riffle thing where they pick an ace, uh, whatever it takes for you to force that card. But once again, I like doing this call force because it lets me have them touch any card they want. So let's say they touch this card over here. I square up the deck. I square up the deck down here, and then I show them the card that they picked which they think is a free selection, but it's the, uh, the ace of clubs, the exact card that I want them to pick. So whatever it is that you need to do to force an ace is what you got to do. Now, I like to do a little bit of a Charlie Air cut meme and put that card there. The reason for that is because you're going to need to control this card and make sure that you also don't lose control of the aces. So the way I do that is that I'll take the card back from their dirty, disgusting hands. And I say, um, clean your hands, young man, clean your hands. And I'll take the card back, do a Charlie Air cut with this hand, put this ace in jug towards my body. 
so that when I squirt up my thumb, guess what I got? I got a little bit of a hot thumb break, right? But this is, of course, covered by my hands, so I can control that card to the top in whatever way I want here. As I say, sir, I'm going to lose your card somewhere in the deck right here. So your card is lost somewhere in the deck, never to be found ever again. Uh, but actually, they will be found because I'm going to give the deck another little bit of a magical cut. And here, you're going to do whatever false cut you want. I like doing this uh, Richard Sanders false cut because I'm attracted to Richard Sanders. I like Canadians. I'm a big fan of Canada. Justin Bieber, I like. Uh, Celine Dion. So you do whatever false cut you want, keeping the aces on top. And you say, we're actually going to use the four aces here to help me out find your card. So, of course, the spectator at this point is going to giggle because they're going to say, ha ha, you fucking messed up, you short piece of shit. You messed up this whole trick. So you are going to get what's coming to you. But really, your setup is uh, far and away from what they could realize here. So you're going to count the aces into the right hand. The reason for this is because you need their ace to be at the face. So we do this by saying we're going to employ the use of the four aces to find your card, sir. Here's where it gets a little bit difficult because you're going to need to hold two breaks at the same time. Most people could barely hold one break, but you're going to be having to hold two breaks here. But it's only for a second, so you, you, you could do it. You could handle it, right? Um, leave in the comments below if you could handle it. Uh, I could handle it, that's for sure. So here what's going to happen is you're going to come in with your thumb and you're going to pick up the break with your thumb. So right now you notice that I have the four aces. I've gotten and I've counted these cards into my hand. So after I've uh, turned these card over, right, I've turned them over, I've counted them into my right hand. And I said, I'm going to use the aces to find your card, sir. And of course, that lets me put it back in the deck and get a hot break right there. Yeah. Yeah, boy. Now, guess what? I'm going to transfer that break to my thumb and you're going to begin counting the aces. What you're trying to approximate is that you're counting the aces just like this. That's what you're trying to approximate. However, this ace, which is the ace that they picked, is really going to go inside of the deck as you count the cards. So you see the hot technique there? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Now I have three aces because their ace has actually been counted inside of the... Oh, man. I'm so excited. I can't wait to see what's inside. So there's some hot tips on this uh, particular move that we're going to go over now. So, of course, you want to kind of angle your body so that you don't have the, uh, the poopy angle here. But you're going to lift up at the back here. You're going to lift up uh, about half the deck. You're going to thumb this ace of clubs into the middle of the deck. You're going to square everything up with that ace. Let's make sure there's no shadow there. So now that ace is in the middle of the deck. You're going to lift up this ace and count off the next one, putting it behind the next one. That's pretty much the actions of the move. So let's go over that one more time to make sure that everyone is on the up and up. I'm going to give you guys some hot uh, West Russian slow motion for you guys here. So I'm thumbing off that ace into half the deck. I'm going to square that up as I lift up at my break here with the aces. Thumb off the next ace, put that behind the stack, and then thumb off the last ace and put that behind the stack. So to the spectator, it should look like you just counted the four aces. Really, you have buried this ace deep into the deck. It's buried uh, deck deep into the um so one more time you're going to show the ace that first ace is going to go in the middle of the deck the next ace is going to get counted off put behind the little stack next day same thing and then finally you're able to lift up and the spectator should think that you have all four aces underneath this lovely stack but guess what you are well in advanced because you have three aces in this hand and you have an ace in the middle hey diddle uh diddle so now guess what you hand the deck to the spectator and you say we're going to use the aces to find your card because believe it or not and of course the spectator is holding on to the ace this gives you the opportunity to count these three cards as four just like this all i'm doing there pushing one off stealing it back as i count the next one and then counting the next one you see the the hot action here so it looks good from any angle right y'all got all the angles there Oh, yeah. So here you're counting these three cards as four and saying what's going to happen is that your card is going to jump out of the deck, do about 17 rotations and land inside of the deck. So are you excited? Because I'm excited. It's going to happen right now. Name your card. And of course, they're going to name their card and it's the ace of clubs. Right. So you do a nice little pause there and you, you go. Um, OK, so we'll do the opposite. And here you do the opposite. So you snap uh, because that's what magicians do. And then you show the fact that you now only have three aces. That's one, two, three aces. 
They're going to say, what? Huh? How did that happen? I saw four aces there, sir. And now my card is gone. And of course, one day spread the cards in their hand, you, you remind them that you did the inverse of the trick that you were planning to do. So now they should have a card face up in the deck. So when they spread, guess what? You have a nice trick there with the ace being right in the, the middle. So that's, uh, that's definitely a hot one. I hope you guys appreciated that because that's, uh, that's one of my, one of my uh, it's on my fave five uh, for my MySpace. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, so yeah, let's get Piggy to 100. Let's get Piggy to 100K, guys. You could do it. I could do it. We could all do it. Um, I'm going to go figure out different ways to use a Ghost in a Jar Funko Mystery Pop to try to get a, a, uh, a prom date. A prom date. Yeah. <laughs>